Hello, I'm Rick D. Ellis, and welcome to the building kit. If you open up any of the panel sets, the first thing you'll notice is this cloner rig here. It's got a bunch of stuff inside it. The only things that are really important right now are this polygon object inside the strip cloner and this spline object here. The entire building is generated from these two objects. In fact, if we turn off the generators, you'll see all we're left with is the spline and the polygon object. Turn them back on, boom. You got the whole building just like that. The idea behind this kit is that a lot of the impressive architecture we see around the world is repetitive. By letting the software do the heavy lifting, you can focus on the key areas that make your building unique and beautiful, and you can pack those areas with all the detail you need without losing time. So let's take a look at how we do that. The heart of the kit is a series of panel sets that come in a variety of styles that can be used individually or in combination with each other. This is one panel. Like all the other panels, it is 7 meters wide by 3 meters high. This 7 by 3 ratio is important, but it's also completely arbitrary. It could have just as easily been 6 by 4 or 21 by 157. The important thing is that whatever the ratio, all the panels have to be consistent. This consistency is what allows them to work together and to be swappable. So for our purposes, 7 by 3 is the new golden ratio. You'll notice these panels are built along the z-axis. If we go into point mode, and highlight all the points, you'll see down here that Y is 3 and Z is 7. X uh, doesn't really matter for the size, but what does matter is that X position is 0. So these panels all need, they need a plane to connect to each other. And that plane is this wall here. This wall is right at X equals 0, and that's fine. But we also have these windows that get pushed back in X. So what we need is another point that's out in space to kind of balance it out and bring the middle back to x equals zero and that's this little point right here so if we delete this point and then highlight all the points again uh, you'll see that x no longer equals zero on the position so undo that bring it all back and that is how we get our ratio seven by three and x equals zero in position another important aspect of the panel is the tags You'll notice on this example there are two material tags and two selection tags. The selection tags are appropriately named wall and glass corresponding to the materials which they hold. On the material tags you'll notice the projection is set to UVW mapping and the length is set to 100% on both the U and the V. These attributes will become important later when we collapse the cloner rig to make our building into a polygon object. Back in our cloner rig, let's take a look at the spline that defines the footprint of our building. It's 49 meters by 35 meters, and since those numbers are both divisible by 7, another way to think about it is that it is 7 panels long by 5 panels wide. We've been looking at the panel Justice 1, but now let's add Justice 3 and 4 into the mix. And then first let's take a closer look at those panels. So I built Justice 3 and 4 to work like bookends for Justice 1. Now of course we can add as many Justice 1's in here as we want and the pattern will still be complete. So let's go back to our cloner and see how that works out. If we click on the strip cloner and decrease the count, we'll see how the spline wraps the panels around the footprint of the building. The strip cloner iterates the panel so we get this repeating pattern. One, two, three, one, two, three. We're going to make a different pattern. So I'm going to take Justice 1 and make four copies of it. And now we get the pattern that we want on the long side of the building. We have Justice 3, five copies of Justice 1, and then Justice 4. Now, because the pattern repeats, we only have to do one more wall to get the pattern that we want. So I'm going to duplicate all of these. And we had seven here. We just need five here. So delete and delete. And now we have the building pattern that we want. Now we're back to the original rig with just one panel. We saw that the strip cloner controlled the number of panels that went around the spline. If we select the RDE building tool, we can control the number of floors. So in this case, let's make this 30, 40, and back to 50. This cloner is also set to iterate, and that means we can do patterns vertically as well. Here's how. I'm going to take this single floor null and duplicate that. Then we're going to go in here and delete Justice 1. And we're going to grab Justice 2 and drag it in here. 
So uh, you'll also want to check to make sure these are zeroed out. You'll get some weird things happening if uh, it's not at zero. So now we have two floors with an alternating pattern. We saw how easy it is to swap panels in and out of the rig. It's just as easy to swap splines that make up the footprint of the building. We're going to grab this circle spline and drag it down here with the rectangle spline. Now we're going to click on the spline wrap and drag the circle spline into the spline field. It's just that easy. In this example, we are back in the cloner rig with Justice 1, 3, and 4 making a pattern around our spline. Let's take a look at how we get our building from a cloner rig to a polygon object. First, select the strip cloner and hit C. This will give us all the panels that the cloner was generating. We'll select them all, right click, connect and delete. If we turn off the RDE building tool and the spline wrap, you'll see we're just left with a strip of our panels. This is where the strip cloner gets its name. So now we're going to go from this to this. I'll show you how to do that. Select the single floor null object, right click, and current state to object. This gives us another single floor null and inside that we'll find our nice piece of geometry here. You can pull that out and go ahead and delete the rest. We'll turn our building rig back on. We'll select the building rig and we'll hit C again. We'll grab all of these objects and then connect and delete one more time. So now we've gone from a bunch of clones to a single polygon object, but it still has the same tags. Often when you connect and delete objects, you end up with a long string of material and selection tags, most of which are redundant. By keeping the projection at UVW mapping and the U and V scale at 100% and having appropriately named selection tags, we avoid that problem. Even though we're no longer dealing with individual panels, you can still change the entire look of your building as easily as you would change the materials on a single panel. And of course, now you can change the projection mapping to something like cubic or cylindrical or adjust the UV scale without creating any problems. Another thing you can do is use deformers on your building rig. The way I do this is by putting the cloner and the deformer inside a null object, so the deformer only affects other objects in the null. You can get some very modern and smooth looking deformations like this 90 degree twist I've seen in some recent skyscrapers. Because the cloner rig arranges the panel so precisely, you can push these deformers pretty far before your geometry starts to break down. As I was experimenting with deformers, I started coming up with these really interesting organic shapes that sort of reminded me of these beautiful Gaudi buildings I saw around Barcelona. The, the point is, you're not limited to making single column buildings that go straight up. You can turn your building into a donut or whatever you want. And of course, if you're deforming the cloner rig, everything is still live and editable. 